all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. So a heartfelt, warm thank you to uh, the man. Definitely, whenever I look at Dark Horse and everything he's doing in these tournaments, my head spins. Yeah. Because he's everywhere. He is everywhere. We need. We definitely need more people like that. That was me when I was a younger man. I can't do it anymore. But picking up the mantle and picking up where he left off, doing double duty. Dark Horse and Josh Brody, the, the team, the fraternal uh, powerhouse, you should say. They, uh, these guys just like play very well with one another, and they just seem to be in tune with the other, wise where they want to be and how they're, they play. They're both excellent players, and they both got this amazing chemistry with each other, and like it, it works so well in part because they're they're both good team players in general. Right. We were talking yesterday about like uh, people who are better as a doubles player, per se, and some people who are just excel at singles, but they both are uncannily good at doubles and singles. Yeah. So it looks like here uh, the Brody team is having a little bit of a struggle gaining control of the stage. Right, the graphic is a little incorrect. I think you got Dark Horses playing Falcon, Brody playing the Blue Pika. All right. We'll just pretend Captain Falcon and Samus are in the same. And the poser switched. All right, here we go. Falcon and uh, Malkin seem to, they, they have a, a very deep understanding of like, hey, if I have a grab, your position is like left. This is like these are the options. The other yeah. player is very cognizant whenever that grab happens, and they're both hesitating ever so slightly when there is a grab, so as to let the action slow down a little bit to say, "Hey, like here comes the alley oop." Yeah, it's good. Good situational awareness. I mean, take the Pikachu needs not to be saved quite often. It's pretty incredible that, uh, that Dark Horse, as Captain Falcon, who gets gimped so easily by Pikachu, is staying alive. Uh, yeah, Pokemon uh, has, is just deep left and right, and there is a lot more room than you, uh, I guess, anticipate there being. It's a testament to the survival instincts of Dark Horse to keep alive, though. is definitely not in his favor. Uh, obviously, the uh, selection of multiple stages playing fusion in the doubles game today. We had counter picking. This is a neutral stage, as a matter of fact. Are those platforms moving? Or are no. they staying in the same place? <laughs> uh, I, I feel like they're the same place. It's just the perspective of the camera is shifting. It feels like they're moving. I kind of thought they were uh, they were further out to the side, but maybe not. Maybe not. We're all tripping at this point. <laughs> I've been awake for 36 hours. <laughs> Everything's moving. <laughs> nice back row. Ooh. 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 Good sequence there. He's gonna get the gimp on Falcon. Excellent. He's gonna get the stock on uh, double kill. Josh Brody, and everyone's down to their last stock now. Paco and Blonde Kid looking a little desperate as they are high damage. Both of them are high damage. They're both hanging out on the <laughs> hanging out on the fringes, looking for some sneaky KO. Blonde Kid with the magic percent. Ah, he lost it. There it goes. Oh god. And that's gonna probably be it. Ooh. Oh. There's a lot of room for Pikachu to get back. Yep. But not to do it there, and Dark Horse and Josh Brody take that first game. That was good. Josh Brody uh, took the ledge there so that there was no ledge option, and then Dark Horse jumped into the air and used his down air, and that has a huge hitbox. So there was only a tiny little window that Pikachu could have come in, and he had to guess where it was going to be. The flight path usually in that desperation moment is going to be towards that platform, and yeah. trying to sweet spot it in between, no going. Uh, there is obviously an adjustment being made here. There's, there's, they get to strike two stages. And then uh, pick a janky stage after that. So I think they've agreed on Spiral Mountain. Spiral Mountain. 
Uh, this is a, it's a difficult stage to play on since the, the platform is just so small. And the, the upper platforms, the aerial platforms, don't really offer the kinds of safety that you're used to in, in a stage like Dreamland. Yeah, uh, yeah and it's just, it, it, it's a great stage for Pikachu, because there's a lot of options to kill for it, like, there you go, uh, off, the, off the top. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it is a wacky stage, it's just hard, to, like, cognitively to wrap your head around it, because part of the stage has, like, a slope in the back there. <laughs> Wait, it does? <laughs> it's a spiral, so, it, it, you know, just, it's eventually uh -huh. starts to go oh, oh, down. Oh, I see, I see. It's just, it's just odd looking, odd playing. Yeah, there's no, there's no real combo ability on the platforms. But hey, we out here. It's legal. <laughs> Galore. Oh, look at that. Josh brother. comes up and saves his brother. Brother in peril is no good. <laughs> uh, it's like Brody's fixated in it right now. As I say, he loses his first stock, but he seems to have controlled the pace of this game a lot more. Uh, the, 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 the pace of this game is a lot more in his favor. When it comes to Pika Ditto, he's no stranger. And it's uh, really uneven on the other side. Yeah, Josh and, and Dark Horse have definitely gotten a lot more confident in this, in this game. Because you can see, instead of going for a, maybe a space control strategy uh, or some sort of uh, distract the other, toss them off, and, and go 2v1 strategy, they're just doing a divide and conquer. Right. And that's the sort of strategy that you do when you know that individually you can beat either of the other team team members. They got isolated and they got uh, outplayed on that one, and it's uh, quickly now 2-0. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you aren't, don't match up well with the players already, playing two 1v1s is not a good thing. It's not a good luck. Exactly. Uh, and they know that. <laughs> Another thing is you don't see uh, Brody or Dark Horse ever get to such a terrible position where they need to be saved. Obviously, those moments of rise and doubles, but they're few and far between. That's true. Uh, positioning is such an important part of the doubles game that it really uh, – is feast or famine when you consider putting yourself in a vulnerable state. Obviously, Kirby mixing in with three rats is a little daunting, but first person to get combo to pick up is going to more than likely get a stock take. Yeah, and, and even though this looks daunting to all the rest of us, Dark Horse has said he's actually very confident in a matchup against Pikachu. So I think like he it. probably feels at home here. Yeah, some people like it, despite what the uh, the reasoning is or what have you. If you're familiar with it, there it is. So here it is again, just two 1v1s Ooh. happening on either side of the stage. Dark Horse tried to come back with a, with a tricky, gimmicky kind of, you know, suck you up, and uh, it just did not work. Down tilts for days. Takes a ledge. Hard read forward smash. And uh, all of a sudden, Team Norcal looking not worse for the wear. They're really going at this one. Looks like Blonde Kid is stock tanking currently. Hasn't lost the stock yet. As I said, he loses it. Oh. Wow. Sweet spot to get to that ledge. <laughs> Gosh, just sort of dominating in the 2v1 over here. He certainly is. Paco is taking the brunt of the damage, but it's not, not too far out. Ooh, nice sequence there. You really do have to focus on gimping Kirby every single time he's off stage, not allowing him to get back, because that's what's really going to turn the tides of this battle. It's true. Kirby has a lot of the kill power in this matchup. Oh, yeah. And you already know that Pikachu's Ability to recover is going to allow him to get back most of the time. So Kirby off stage, you got to convert on that kill. Mm -hmm. X 
excellent wow. offstage play by Josh. That was incredible. Yeah, he's just so smart. He's cognizant of the, everything that's going on on the screen. And off the screen. And off the screen. And off the screen, yes. The greater screen. <laughs> oh, he gets wow. Scrooge McDuck. He is conditioning him to go down deep totally a couple times in a row. Faded he that out. Smelled it coming. Smelled it coming. And, and sometimes it's Kirby. That's your best play, too. It's like you know that they're coming for you, and it's obvious. Why not dip down real quick and hit him with a dare? Oh, speaking of which. Oh, oh wow. Again. Time and place. Just like that. It's 2v1 again. Back back through here. Get one more stock. Oh, there it is. And he got, there it is. He got him through a large part of the stage. And that's going to be it for Losers Finals 3 0. Thank you for playing Northern Team California. Battle. But Josh Brody and Dark Horse are going to go on Team to the grand finale against who else? LD and LD. Isaiah?